If I had a parchment scroll full of suggestions on how to handle rejection, this wouldn't be it. <laughs> now, rejection is inevitable, but no one enjoys it. It's an old time bomb to the ticker, and when it detonates, it feels like someone drove a row crop tractor over our innards. Nevertheless, everyone should accept it and handle it with grace, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't do that, and I have collected many viral examples from the depths of Reddit, and each one gets increasingly aggressive. <laughs> Okay, on this first one, these two were texting with the intention of dating, at least the, the woman was. Judging by the first text, this guy had just gotten finished watching something gross. He starts off with a very cool one-liner and says, Oh baby, I'll service you and your car from now on. And she says, ha 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 Let's go on a date before I get serviced. And then he says, I'll be there Saturday, lol. I'm actually staying the night there too. And she says, where? And they cut out this part because privacy. And then she goes on to ask, do you already have plans for when you're here? And he says, hopefully just you, but no plans other than that. Just needed a breather from my son. Just needed a breather from my son. I don't know. Um, when I'm first getting to know somebody, I think I would phrase that a little bit differently and say something like, huh, I just need, a, I love my son, but I just, I just need some time to myself. <laughs> Maybe don't make it seem like you hate your child. I'm going to book a hotel room tonight when my check hits. And she asks, oh, how old is your son? He says 13. And then he asked, maybe you could stay the night. And she said, I don't do that on the first night. I'm sorry. So he decides to backpedal with no feet. He says, I don't mean all night. She says, ha ha ha, what? You said stay the night. He's just putting it in reverse with faith. Now he's thinking, oh, I, I gotta go back to the romanticals. I gotta go back to the romantics. He says, I meant like hang out at the room after dinner, maybe cuddle up. I'm a huge fan of cuddles and the best in the world at giving full body massages, which is predictable, but you know, not the worst move. No, the worst move is what he does next. She says, that's not what I usually do after first dates. I just don't think we are on the same page with dating. That's totally okay. Just not a match. Putting him down easy, slightly afraid. Then he says something confusing. Uh, he says, exceptions could be made. What? Lol, what do you mean? I mean dinner, hang out, and eat between your legs like a Sunday lunch buffet after dinner. Clap them cheeks too. <coughs> hey, doesn't make sense. Lunch after dinner. You can tell how nervous he is because what he just said doesn't make any sense. And and he's lucky that this lady just ended it as nicely as she did. You know it's bad when the wife rejects her own husband, and that's exactly what happens in this next one. It's very kind of disturbing. The context is this woman is frustrated because her husband will not stop talking about her body and trying to initiate sex all the time. And he says that if they just have more sex, everything will work itself out, which is just what? An 11, that's a 12 year old boy's response. Something's off and you can tell from the jump. He says, are you okay? And she says, I'm tired. I'm going to go lay down. I need my meds. And his response is, I fuck you. What? And she says a different version of that. That is phonetically pretty close, pretty similar, but very different meaning. She says, I fucking hate you. Now, is this the Geico caveman? This is the type of dude who would throw his own shit at the wall and beat his chest while trying to save me 15% or more in car insurance because what, what? He says, I'm so sorry. Oh, need help. Who's O? OJ? He does need help. OJ does, does need help. That is very true. Next, she replies with, you make me physically ill. He says, again, I need help. I need to fuck badly. She says, leave me alone. And he says, never. And I agree. I think you do need help. I'm not religious, but even I think you need Christ. I think you need a preacher to lay his hand over your shoulder and pray and flick some water from the Jordan River all over your face. And it doesn't stop from there. In fact, it gets weirder. Looking in the replies to this post, and she says, even worse, yesterday we were in the middle of a conversation about his behavior because he was mad at me the night before about something. I don't even know. And he started yelling that I was a whore. And right in the middle of it, when I was trying to redirect our seven-year-old, he says, titties. Just talking about my body right in front of my kids. He also says, I like you. I want to fuck. Just let me love you, etc. All unprovoked, unwanted, and rebuffed. He never changes and it's always out of nowhere. To me, it goes beyond blatant disrespect. This feels infantile because can you imagine a, an adult man male, a human adult man male with a wedding ring on his finger and a child and a mortgage and a 401k just out of nowhere dropping everything and just being like, 
Boom. So I started thinking, and I was like, there has to be some kind of like drug related issue or brain damage or a tumor. This just doesn't seem right or normal. So I started reading further into the comments and I saw this comment that was very interesting. This person says, I lost a friend in meth. And so I got a very close up look of what you're describing. He lied to me a lot, even when it didn't matter. He lied to me about meth because I told him that if he didn't get help and stop, I wouldn't be able to keep him in my life. This is my standard after having an ex-girlfriend who abused heroin and refused help. When she refused, I told her it was over and walked away. If he has prescription amphetamines for narcolepsy, then yes, it will be very difficult to tell if he is abusing those or smoking meth. I'm so sorry for you. I'm not joking about your safety though. Amphetamine abuse can cause psychosis. It can make someone hypersexual, which was how I knew when my friend was lying to me. He would start talking about weird sexual stuff unprompted, stuff I never asked about and didn't want to know. And the wife responded and said this, holy shit, this might be exactly what is going on. Which her response to this makes me think it wasn't always like this in the beginning because I can't imagine him being like this from the jump. And then another commenter replied and said, I've never tried GHB, but I've heard it is extremely sexual and disinhibitive. You think perhaps that could be the issue. And the wife replied and said, I wouldn't be surprised, but he's like this even when he's not on it. I don't know. I do know that even if a person is not on a very intense drugs like this that make you this crazy, they can still have symptoms like this on the come down. Even if he's not on it, it doesn't matter. He could still be hypersexual and strange. So yeah, don't, don't handle rejection like this and don't do drugs. Okay, next one. Now this next one is a good old fashioned Tinder exchange, a very normal, healthy, and um, not scary at all exchange. All right, here we go. Liam here says, hey, aren't you gorgeous? What are you doing? Thank you. I'm wrapping up at work. What are you up to? Hey, what are you doing tonight? You're so fucking pretty, it's crazy. Tonight already starting to try and lead into what he's here for. All right, I had a pretty chill night in. How was your night? He says, eh, it was okay. Getting through life, you know. You want to hang out tonight? I'd love to actually meet you. She says, I'm seeing this a little late. I'm already headed home from work. And her last message is just a little cut off here, but she says, are you asking like a date? Giving him a chance to be like, are you sure you want to do this? Well, I work Monday to Friday, but I'm off Friday at like five until Monday. How about you? Also, I should be 100% honest. You live in Lancaster, 26 miles away, and it's really far. Not even far. Not even that far. I want to FaceTime with you, and you make me come. That's what I want. Oh, okay. You make me come with you. I don't. I, I don't care about that. It doesn't. It didn't matter. You don't. It didn't, you don't matter. Make me though, because you're a little doggy who likes to be treated like a. My girlfriend's 16 year old child is right next door. I can't, I can't be talking like this in here. This is disgusting. Am I right? <laughs> right? Of course she replies, are you serious? I work in LA, so it wouldn't have been difficult at all. Thank you for letting me know early that you're disgusting. It's kind of funny because I would have fucked you if you treated me like a fucking person. And he heart reacted it, which, Okay. Of course, he's going to temporarily backpedal and he says, look, that's the dirtiest and weirdest side of me. And the truth is I should have just gone out with you and treated you like a person. Repeating exactly what she said. No effort. All right. Do you have any thoughts like that? Immediately back into, okay. Because some part of me feels like if I hadn't just fucked this up, that you would be okay with that. As long as I take you out and hold your hand and play you guitar and eat with you and make you laugh. Part of you feels that way. She pretty much, she said that. Have you ever thought about being somebody's pet? And then she goes scorched earth Armageddon on him and says, listen, if I wanted a 2008 great value Green Day stand to degrade me with pet play, I would have gone to an emo night at a bar and picked one out in person. And he says, very good insult. You're too fat and ugly and uneducated to even insult and doesn't know what an insult is because just insulted. Who's, who's uneducated? Have fun with your cats, you feck. <laughs> A lot of filthy language in here. I, I I can't monetize this. This fella divulged his dark arts on the fourth message exchange, which tells me he is a swiping savant and he's far past the point of trying to hide this. And the misspellings, my God, it makes me think he's just maniacally typing on the subway like DD from Dexter's Laboratory, just trying to hurry up so he can disturb the next 15 people in his Rolodex. Pretty cool. Pretty cool guy. Now this last one is aggressive. It's very aggressive. This whole conversation is not available online, but these two have been on a dating app and we're talking and he apparently hid the crazy well enough to the point where he got a phone number and then he was like, well, now the mask comes off. Uh, I'm a goblin. The first half of this text message exchange is not available. It just says Mario and she says, okay, such a dry response. I'm assuming she asked who is your favorite Lopez and he said Mario and she said, mm, 
Don't like it. It's George. Wrong answer. Saved by the Bell is stupid. He clearly could sense that he goofed and needed to brush up on his sitcom game. So he just was like, screw it. I'm moving on to the next topic. And he says, how was the mall? Get anything good? She says, no, I didn't look. I was just returning something and sent him a photo of like a dress or I don't know. And he says, oh, that looks really good. Got to get you some lingerie. Now there's a lot of texts in between that aren't available because this next part, this last part, it starts with, I don't want to drive to wherever for whatever. I don't have enough gas. And he says, all right, that's cool then. Didn't know all of that. Lol. You said you had some school stuff the other day. Now it's gas. You dirty, fat, sloppy, broke piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You got no gas, but got gas to go to the mall window shopping. Thanks for making my morning. And too many excuses and he caught her. It's a photo of her, I think, and it's just bleeped out. He says, yes, this shit is funny, lol. Fat ass bitch. God, I really sound really white when I'm when I'm saying this. You pushing what? Almost 190, 200? <laughs> <laughs> Which of course is a defense. He's tremendously sad and horribly confused. He can't stop thinking, why do I keep getting shut down, dude? I go, how do I get a phone number and then immediately fumble it within a few text message exchanges? It can't be me. No, I, can't, I refuse to believe that it's me. It has to be women. They're so indecisive and picky. There's no path from point A to point B. It's just women teleporting me all over the place without rhyme or reason. And I'm frustrated and I'm so sad and alone, but I can't show that because that's demeaning and horribly embarrassing and way too vulnerable, especially to somebody that I don't know. So I will get aggressive instead, way too aggressive because if I can't be happy, I can at least be feared. <sighs> anyway, um, while we're on the topic of frustrating and aggressive, watch this video of this husband yelling at his wife in the grocery store. Okay, see you next time.